ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dying times here. But what is here is a test. And I know it's early, and I apologize, but we're going to be doing a test today. And I'm going to wait for a few heads to get in here. I know it's early, but you got to wake up. Let's do this. I'm ready to do this. But there's a little story that goes behind this, so one more individual and we'll do this test because I'll explain when we get there though well I should probably start explaining now so for a while there was a time where I legit thought bone sickness and their final at the time opus theater of morbidity was a lost album the vinyl press Sadly, was a mispress where every copy is just completely almost unplayable, especially on the B side. But um, I ended up with three copies of this, and a buddy of mine was like, Hey, I have this, you know, way of unwarping records, and he kind of, you know, swore by it and he was like look I even got like that bone sickness b-side to play he's like it's still a little wonky but it's not as bad and it wasn't and thank you Aaron because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get the at least the a-side of theater of morbidity on vinyl to work and this is the original mix with samples so what we're going to do, while we have the Caligari cassette version also, this is the reissue that's remastered and everything without the samples. So first, A-side, original mix with samples on, uh, I forget what color they called this. We'll just call it Heineken Green. So, it came on this really sick, like, Heineken beer bottle green wax. And, you know, at first, obviously, the cosmetics look absolutely amazing. I mean, I'm a big bone sickness fan. Like, hails to Mitch. Like, there's that giant flag behind me. That's a bone sickness flag. That's the cover of this record here but I want to wait till there are five people in here and then we'll get this going because I've been wanting to do it and yesterday I got caught up and could not do the video I wanted to do but like here was my first uh, indication that like something was kind of boof about the LP press was as soon as I got it like just I don't know anytime you get something that kind of resembles a pizza box it's kind of like oh no one more person and we can start but uh you know cosmetics aside I thought it was great to see the cover like because the DIY cassette version I loved it but I played it I legitimately like played it to death like, it was played to the ground. So, you know, when I saw that the vinyl was available, I instantly jumped on it. And next thing I know, every single distro and label that had copies yanked it off the shelves. And I'm left like, wait, I'm like what? wait, what? Is it because, like, it's all warped and everything? Like, so I ended up with three copies of this, but one... I just gave to my buddy Aaron to see if he could fix it, and he fixed it. But his copy actually, you know, he can get through the B-side. Mine, it, it's still very wonky on the B-side. But again, I know it's early, but 
I've been trying to do this test. I just want at least five people in here. Which is embarrassing. But, yeah. That's how we need to do this. Because I know a lot of people are like, yeah, I, I really like the, the new version. But, like, there's just something about this, what is considered hardcore classic. Modern classic, I would say this came out around the time where all these bands were releasing gnarly, disgusting demos. And Bone Sickness put out this grindcore masterpiece. And then the band kind of deteriorated, but has re-risen from the grave and is on... Not just Caligari Records, but Rotted Life Records, and I forget who else. But we have four people. Let's just start now. This is Bone Sickness, Theater of Morbidity, the vinyl version first with samples. We're going to play the entire A-side. So it's going to start with Thing from the Grave, Slaughter Shed, Murderous Amputee, The Man Who Was Death, Maniac at Large, Mutilate the Living, and Rotten Grin. So, this was originally all DIY, but the LP was a Hell's Massacre release. And like I said, we're only going to stick to the A-side. So, after the vinyl version, we'll play the sampleless remastered cassette version. Yes. Had to make sure the weight's correct. All right, we should be good. All right. We have Funeral Mitch on drums and vocals, Jay Grave on bass and vocals, Mr. E Bone on guitar, and Rusty Nail on guitar. But, like I said, this is the original version. So you're the judge and jury. Let's do this. Crypt 
keeper. After the sample, crazy ways how people kill each other, all these crazy murderers and stuff. <laughs> but that's what I mean. It's it's a very humorous listen, but while we're gonna put on the cassette version now, which has a new mix to it, but also does not have any samples. This is on Caligari. I think they still have copies. So I think they're, they're on like their second press, I think. But some of you might like this more because it's just straight, straight to the point.
everybody was here since the beginning. Which version did you like more? The original with samples? Or the new version without samples? There is no right or wrong answer. It all comes down to your personal opinion. So I, I would like to honestly know, like, anybody watching, what do you feel about, uh, you know, the two different versions? What do you like more? The one with the samples or the one without the samples? demo this one. I'll leave your comments below and I'll check them out. But we also finally, after five some years, I dig the samples too. I think it makes it like just fun. It makes it stand out from like because it has really fun samples and some of them they do take up a lot of time, but it's like, I think nine minutes and 35 seconds in full without the samples. But I really like both mixes. I like having two different ways to enjoy the album. And it's kind of something, you know, Mortician has, has tried it with a live drummer even. If you listen to, uh, oh man, the... Final Bloodbath Sessions. Final Bloodbath Sessions are Mortician without the samples. And with a live drummer, pretty much a greatest hits. It's alright, like, but I remember when I first got it being... Like, it's not like Mortician samples are the reason, you know, I always liked Mortician. But at the same time, a lot of it had to do with, you know, me being a fan of horror movies and that connection with being a fan of horror and especially, you know, more obscure horror when you're at a young age and, you know, everybody else is talking about how brutal Scream was, but, you know, you just saw Cannibal Holocaust for the first time. It's kind of like, you know, ah, fuck, like, I really like both mixes. I, I, it's one of those releases, like, that's why I wanted you folks to kind of pick your poison. Like, I know I should have had this set up a, a little bit different. The microphone should have been pointing towards the turntable speakers and then when it came time for the cassette I should have had them facing towards the cassette speakers so I know you didn't get an obvious full quality chance to take this in but like legitimately right now the only way to hear this version of the record is digitally because like I said the reissue does not have the samples. So if you're looking for bone sickness, theater of morbidity, but you know, you want like the whole, you turned me into a corpse junkie sample. If you want the Iceman sample that starts off a uh, vehicular, hom vehicular homicide on the B side of things, like to me that was like almost a selling point as lame as that sounds, because the grind or hard gore, whatever bone sickness want to consider theater of morbidity, all I know is Funeral Mitch is seriously the man. Like, I appreciate that flag so much because, again, this is one of my favorite, like, records. And, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm dead serious. It's been since the day it came out. And I was lucky enough to get one of the original DIY cassette versions. It's just, I legit played it to dust. Like, that thing just... 
It died a noble death. And, you know, I was lucky because when it died, Caligari hit me up, like, in this, like, kind of secret, like, it was like a, at the time, it wasn't announced yet, so, like, he was like, yo, like, I'm reissuing the tape, but it's going to be remastered without the samples. So I was, like, I don't care, like, awesome, as long as, like, somebody is reissuing, like, to me, what's one of the best grind records in recent memory, like, this Caustic Wounds Grinding Terror demo, like, those two came out around the same time, and they're both equally as gnarly, but I really do like the fact that, like, here's a more serious version of Theater of Morbidity. I think that's just cool, like, but again, like, Mortician gave you that option also with the final bloodbath sessions. And some people kind of just brush that release off. It's always worth listening to. Although, it, I think if it was better produced, it would have been recepted better. But now people give it a lot of praise, but when it came out, it was kind of like, dude, I don't believe you're still listening to, like, it was one of the, like, there was that type of bull crap, like, I'm looking at one of my old CD, like, ROM or promo photos hanging on my wall from Chainsaw Dismemberment, and I'm just, like, remembering, you know, like, just... Like, my ex-girlfriend even, like, making fun of me for having that hanging up. But, I'm not sure what speed this has to be on, so I apologize. Crematory! Denial! Now this is a giant shit show of a story. I don't even want to get into it. But I'll put it this way. These came to my house wrapped in newspaper. Like here's what we're listening to. I have multiple But I got this for the demos, but I'll tell you the problem in a moment. Now this is a little unnecessary like to do what this person did, but have a case. I just have It sounds great though, like honestly, but nothing else does, trust me. Just denial. Sounds awesome. Or denied. It's denied. Sorry, drawing a blank. I gotta be gentle with this one. babies. Don't worry, I play it too.
I got yelled at for that one. It's a great EP though. If you're like, it's a, it's Swedish death metal, but it's not like, you know, overly Swedish. If you get what I'm saying, like, it still has some of the power of the demos, but that's the thing I'm gonna get into in a second. Because I bought these for the demos. I mean, this was a bonus, and it's the only thing that sounds good, so it's all, it's all good gravy. Because, again, I'll go into it in a minute. I'll shut up, I'm sorry. I love that drum sound on here, though. this record label's name or anything like that but so here's the b-side and I was actually told that these demos are so heavy that you cannot put them on vinyl now this is not my speakers just listen to this mix I'm not even joking, this is the actual mix. Like, come on. And the, but like the excuse I got You're legitimately talking about some of the most legendary death metal demos of all time. And you're telling me they're too heavy to be pressed on the vinyl properly? It doesn't really make sense. Because I can pull out a their Gotham demo reissue that sounds absolutely amazing. Now, if there's some reason that these don't sound like good if like the master was lost or something then all that would had to have been said was hey the master was lost and this was the best we could do not oh it's too heavy to be pressed on the vinyl like that's just not true like that it, it that, that's not how things work because again like listen to i'm gonna put like Oh wait, it just says warped massively on it. Maybe this one sounds better. But these were not shipped in with the cover or anything. They were just shipped in wrapped up newspaper. So, yeah. Wasn't very fun. And then, I'm not even Italian, and this dude's like, saying some not very cool things about Italians. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> all I said was, what's wrong with, like, the LPs are warped, man. Like, that's all I said. And that, the, and like when I sent the video and everything, I was like, like the demos are like super like wonky and weird. It was just like, dude, they're just too heavy for vinyl. But like, no, they're not. Because that's the weird thing. This one's listenable. So why say that when you know I'm eventually going to find a non-messed up copy <laughs> of at least one of the demos, although I can't tell which one because I don't have a booklet or anything. Very strange circumstance.
even this one, it's like super, it's, it's I mean, it sounds good, and it's, but it's just a little wonky. But like, these are legendary demos that should be preserved properly. So I was, I was just very disappointed when I, you know, opened the mail one day. I was just like, what the heck is this? And it's just a bunch of records wrapped up in newspapers. But these things happen. And when it comes to crematory, I hope somebody one day, you know, gives these the justice they really deserve. Although I heard they did a repress of these that actually was like pretty on point so I do know the cassette version is absolutely fine and like sounds really good from what I was told so yeah you know if you see crematory uh, denied on cassette definitely grab it as long as it's from like parasitic records or something don't grab it from the actual record label that put it out. Otherwise, like, just, I mean, come on. Who does that? That's just kind of like a massive F you. And normally it's one of those things I wouldn't really care about, but, like, that was kind of expensive. And it's just like, dude, come on. Like, you can't be selling, like, just, you can't, we're not selling, you can't be sending people that their stuff in newspapers when it comes, like, when it comes to vinyl, I mean, like, not even in the cover, it was that, like, that, that was the only thing that was just like, whoa, 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 like, dude, this stuff's gonna get, like, ruined. Like, you can't, you can't just ship something without any sort of, like, hardcover or anything. Like, it's obviously going to get damaged. I just thought it was just strange. It was something I didn't think I needed to even ask. But just because I don't listen to it enough... Oh, yeah. Hell, Live at Roadburn. This is not the... This is a self-titled Live at Roadburn. I was going to put Mismore Live at Roadburn on, and I still might. Just to switch it up. This is one of those records, though. I, I don't know why I don't listen to it more. I just love everything. I love these Live at Roadburn releases, period. We have MSW on guitars and vocals, Sheen Coffin on guitar, Nate Myers on bass, and ALN on drums and vocals. Recorded April 2018. Mastered by James Botkin, 2019. Roadburn Records. 
a division of Burning World Records. Because I was listening to the self-titled a couple days ago. And I was like, oh yeah, I, I have the, the live album too. I like just had it. So fucking cool. the hell to me this is where it's at this is essential now I know this labels out of business 
or they changed their name. I forget the deal. So I don't know how to actually, well, Grace on Records has all the cassettes for the Hell Trilogy. But I don't, there's no box sets. Like here's Hell 2, Disc 2. It's four LPs, it's massive, like, this thing's gorgeous. This is my like prized possession when it comes to vinyl. My hell box set, like hands down. My whole hell collection, like I busted my ass to like get it where it's at. Like it was it was hard. I love to Here's Hell 1. And I know some of you might be like, but they're picture discs. They sound awesome. Like... And this is a massive box set. Like, wait till you see the posters in here. Here's Hell 3. I have this on cassette also, but... Look at that thing. Lower your head don't believe well like I love the whole Dante's Inferno theme it's just it's so neat cool and here's just one of hell two like if you're a fan of sleep imagine if sleep cared about black metal and that's what hell sounds like. Legit. Like, I'm dead serious. You just gotta, like, find, like, trust me, listen to the self-titled with an open mind. And you'll hear exactly what I'm talking about. Because that's not a bass, that's a guitar. Dude, it's like, heavy. And for all you bands out there, MSW has good rates. When it comes to mixing and mastering, trust me, he's somebody I trust with my music. Hell is MSW. This is one of many awesome posters inside here. Real quick. You're welcome, Matt. But it's just such a glorious release. Like, if you're a fan of Wolves in the Throne Room, uh, like, if you want to hear one of their best releases, go check out their Live at Roadburn uh, release. I, I know it's live on YouTube because I used to, like when Wolves in the Throne Room first came out and like they were kind of like legitimately they were the shit when they first came out like everybody I know per like there wasn't a person I knew that legitimately didn't like two hunters two hunters like for me and some of my friends was like that resurgence of like, I don't know, just black metal that we had kind of been waiting for when it came to live music. Because normally, 
you know, you'd have the bigger black metal names tour, but then every now and again you'd have, like, my old band played this show with Florida's Dark Faith, and it was just sick because, like, you know, this is this kind of obscure, like, black metal band playing a show, like, with us in the middle of this, like, hellhole of a neighborhood, and it was just gnarly. This is one of those, like, times in your life you, like, look back on and you're like, what the hell were we thinking? But it, it was, it was fun, though, so that's all that really matters at the end of the day. And I always lose <laughs> the hell self-title. Whenever I put it back, I'm like, wait, where'd it go? Here it is. I'm sorry. It's just the cover, it always just looks straight up, like, black to me. Although I know it's not. Like, when I look at it, I'm like, wait, what color is that? But, um, I'm gonna mess with some tapes in a minute. But I'm just looking for, uh, because it's extremely cold outside. And I did promise a black metal set. And we did do the test already. But I'm just trying to... The thing is, I got to just be kind of picky here. Because when it comes to the black metal stuff, you know, I have to be careful due to copyright nonsense. But that's why we're going to play some kind of rare stuff. Uh, I do play the Commodious side a lot. And yeah, we're going to listen to Commodious because I love it. This is the Appalachian Noise Records release. Rest in peace to Appalachian Noise. I think you never know. Appalachian Noise can always make a comeback. All depends on their stock. Because right? when they have certain releases, dude, that shit is gone. You might have 20 minutes, maybe. Like, when he would drop, like, certain releases, you would, like, legit have 20 minutes. Like, a 20-minute window to get in there.
eclipsing honor and decay, thy commodious. So good. Don't go paying crazy prices for this though, although I'm sure it's going for some heavy prices. It is worth it, but like... I'm sure there's like some hundred dollar plus copies out there. Just because of the commodious and valid material. I, I love this. It's so good. I forgot to add this one valid black metal split but I don't know which side's valid. It's not labeled. But now I want to listen to some black metal. so sick but the like you don't need to be the gnarliest drummer to have like a sick black metal band it helps but like I love just a good like just D beat <laughs> like, that shit just puts a smile on my face and I love it. I would say I'm a sucker for it. Eclipsing Honor and Decay, and uh, I'm gonna put a Valak split on, but I don't know if it's gonna be side Valak or side. Oh man, I can't even pronounce this dude's name remotely close. This is on Banner of Blood. 
hell to go? Uh, I've done. <laughs> like I know I put it down here.
love that tremolo. Like, so sick. Overseas next. Portugal. Sorry. Now again, unmarked, but. That's the way they chose to do it, so it's kind of interesting. But, Black Salise, a corpse of Temple. I don't know how this is going to sound, just because it's raw as hell to begin with. But, I love the threat. The threat is awesome. All of his albums have a threat on them. This? Oh man, that would be hard to do, honestly. Like, I'm not even joking. Black Solis demo? I mean, shit. Like, This Do you have all of his full lengths? Dude, I, I saw that somebody had a copy on cassette. I, I need to get that. Like, Cause I have all the old stuff except for, uh, I have this. Mysteries. Hold on, let me get out my Yeah, like I have Mysteries and uh, Banished from Time and one on cassette, which you know what, I'll, you know, I want to put some U.S. stuff on. I love this record though, like, I know it's not for everybody, but like, it's just sick. Let's see if, uh, that's kind of better. But I'll read you the threat in a moment. They all come with threats. Here's mysteries. Oh, I forgot to grab the last full length. Great promo. I think this is red vinyl too. Yep. Look at that. Oh yeah, this sounds stupid. This was the only time I was actually bummed on 
getting a random vinyl color because I had the other ones in red already and when I got banished from time I was like oh yes please be red like just so they all go together I got blue but Again, it doesn't matter. I, I love his music. I think this might be the most threatening of all the uh, threats, also. Again, I'll read them all. We'll let him wither in the background real quick while I read you this threat here. All right, so this is from Banished From Time. Banished From Time was recorded at the Black Chamber during the cold autumn of 2017. Keep this record to yourself. If you fail to understand this, the war is also against you. If, you rec if this record doesn't mean anything to you anymore, just destroy it. So, it's not too threatening, but still, it doesn't want you to share it with others. I'm sorry, but, you know, we're not listening to this record. But still. You know, I, I understand. I get the point. He doesn't want, you know, too many people hearing his tunes, I guess. Which... Hey, it's, it's black metal, you know? I don't really know too much myself sometimes. But what, what we're listening to, A Corpse of Temple, probably my honest, personal favorite from Black Solis. And if you're one of those people that are like, how the hell can you tell the difference? There's a difference. The ship rules. If this is a type of black metal you like, if you like, you know, bands like Marduk and stuff, then go listen to that. But, like, you know, this it, it, this is not made for everybody, and that's the point. And that's what's so neat about it. Like, it really kind of, like, when you look at somebody's collection, it kind of just shows how they are as a person. As like, Again, that sounds corny. It sounds stupid. But, like, you look at somebody's collection and you look at variety and normally that person is, like, an open-minded individual. But I'm the complete opposite. I don't even like cheese on my cheeseburgers. Like, I think that's it's kind of nasty. Like, I like regular hamburgers. But the old books covered by dust have the key... For the gateway to unleash the dead from their graves to serve me to honor me I feed their souls with candlelight they serve me as they spread evil and darkness upon the living the world is a corpse and all light shall be faded for new Order's arrival. A corpse, a temple was recorded at the Black Chamber under the sixth moon of. That's a uh, twenty sixteen. No, that's wrong. Shit. Ah, oh, my bad. Waxily salutes. Wait, where's... The, oh, here's the threat. If you own this for anything else than black metal worship, you should fuck off. If you don't need this anymore, destroy it. Like, I, I love that stuff. I really do. I think that that's great. Like, more bands, you know, need to follow that. You know, most people are not going to just destroy I, I'm sure there's probably some kid out there that actually took that to heart and 
you know, he might have got tired of raw black metal and just, like, for some reason, I'm, like, imagining this, like, cartoonish scenario where some kid is, like, hand-feeding his records to, like, a lion. Yeah, I took some R a bunch of RSO capsules this morning, and they're kicking in. So I'm feeling pretty, pretty, pretty good. Like, but, uh, yeah, like, I just keep picturing this kid just wasting his record by feeding them to, a, like, a lion or some kind of, like, big cat. I don't know why, but that's just what's going through my head right now. But we're going to jump to America real quick. And one of my personal, like, favorites when it comes to this new wave of American black metal. Although this individual wants nothing to do with that. This is Haunt. We're Mars of Undead Power. <laughs>
Mr. V. Uh, grimoires of Undead Power. But this is another U.S. black metal artist. It's a friend of mine. And it's one of my favorites because I love the synthesizer usage. And again, there's a nice threat in here, which I love also. But this is Grok, a spineless descent. Absolutely icy, icy black metal. It's all good, man. Don't worry.
comes to uh, Grok or Grok. Yeah, Spineless Descent is one of my favorite black metal cassettes I own. And I have to thank, uh, you know, one of my favorite bands because I wouldn't even have known that existed without them. I just think that's, that's sick, you know. But, uh, Oh yeah, I wanted to put a record on. We'll stick to the U.S. black metal uh, for a couple minutes. We got some Demon C. Aside from Joined in Darkness, this is my favorite Demon C record. Within the Selvan Realms of Frost. That's how I felt yesterday and today. It's gnarly outside here in Pennsylvania. Great black metal record here though. Reissued by a Nuclear War Now. Okay. Nineteen ninety five and to ninety six this was recorded. This is a twenty sixteen reissue. Like most kids were like listening to corn or nine inch nails. I know I was listening to nine inch nails in like ninety five. Uh, 95 a lot. First CD I ever bought was the Downward Spiral. I'll never forget it. I had the cassette version too, which I really wish I still had. But I saw Demon C live this one time and they just had members of Corifragrium as their backing band. It was ridiculous. Everything was just vicious and just one of the coldest, like I I liked both when I was in like fifth grade. And like When I got older, I really liked Dead Again by Typo Negative. It's the same with Celtic Frost. Like, as much as I love, you know, and it's obvious what I'm gonna pull out. Like, you know, like, I love it to death, but if I had my choice, That would be monotheist if I could have, you know, whatever Celtic Frost record I wanted, it would be monotheist. That's my personal, like, favorite when it comes to, to that. can't really go wrong with like October Rust, Black Number One, but like I really like Dead Again. I think that's a good, I think it's a good record. I saw them on that tour and it was, it was sick. But you know, Peter had his problems and we all know that. Like, he had, like, just gotten out of Rikers, like, when I saw them. He looked like shit. Like, seriously, he had no business being on stage. He drank, like, not, like he drank three whole bottles of wine. And, like, I'm sure, you know, if you've seen Typo Negative before, that's just something that, that happens. 
but like, dude, he was like skin and bones, like all of his muscles were like just gone. And like he had just gotten out of jail too, so like you would think that he'd come out kind of like, you know, ripped, but it was the opposite. But, like, as much as, you know, I like typo negative, like, sometimes I just question, like, Peter as just a person. I'm just like, dude, like, how far can you take a joke? Like, I, I, I you know, I get it and whatnot. Like, I, I think it's funny how they troll their fans. Like, the beginning of Black Number One, how it starts with, like, just that, like, dead silence. Or I think it's dead silence or it's feedback. I forget. It's one or the other. But it's like 20 seconds. I'm pretty sure it's just dead silence. And then you hear that thick New York accent. It's like, oh, you like a little joke there. This is Peter and like they and Johnny and like they go through their names and uh, oh yeah, it's it's on October Rust. I'd like to welcome you to our new record, October Rust. We hope you enjoy it. Like, it's just a very interesting, ballsy way to open up a record. But I really like songs like Kissing a Blind Man. And like, I don't know. I'm weird about typo negative, but I definitely enjoy their music. But I'm just one of those people, like, I... You know, when Dead Again came out, I didn't, it was like one of the few times, along with Celtic Frost, where a new record from what I like to call legacy acts, like a legacy act to me is a band like Cannibal Corpse. No matter what, there's not going to be a modern death metal band to play above Cannibal Corpse. It just doesn't work like that. Like, I remember when it comes to pecking order, at one point in time, Napalm Death in the late 90s, you know, they were having a hard time. And then Enemy of the Music Business came out, and it was just like, hey, we're back. Like, you know, and it, it was awesome. And... That was the resurgence of Napalm Death, but I remember even in 2004, I went to see, it was a Jungle Rot, Napalm Death, Macabre, and then Cannibal Corpse. So like, Macabre was playing over Napalm Death, which I thought was so odd, but like, Macabre had just put out Murder Metal, like they were kind of riding a wave of popularity off their new release, which I thought was awesome, because again, Macabre's one of those bands, how can you like that? Like, that's, it's so annoying, and it's like, dude, no. If you think it's, if you think it's annoying, I get it, but like, to me, it's not annoying. To me, I love it. Like, Macabre is one of my favorite death metal bands. And if you want to make fun of me, you can. I, I, I don't care. I, will, I stand by that statement. And I know, like, a lot of people, it's hit or miss when it comes to macabre. And it all comes down to the vocals. If you like the vocals, then heck yeah. I mean, again, it's obviously not for everybody. But if you happen to stumble across Macabre, Sinister Slaughter, or Dahmer especially, in my opinion, you're in for a massive treat. And just sit back and turn that up and enjoy. Because it's killer stuff. And we're going to play some death metal. I do have to clean this, so... Oh, sorry. Torture rack, barbaric persecution. I was gonna put the cassette on, but... Put the LP on.
Torture X. I, I really, really hope we get a new full length this year. I have a feeling we will. Because I'm pretty sure they're playing their own Death Fest. I'm not positive though. If they are, then hell yeah. Uh, always forget what speed in song. I've still not seen them alive. I got to see Witch Bomb at live, but not Torture Rack. But yeah, Torture Rack, one of my favorite modern US death metal bands. Hands down, probably. One of the only bands I have multiple copies of their records on, you know, cassette and vinyl. Because I love them. Apocalyptic. Apocalyptic. Like, dude, where's Chris? Like, somebody should have sent Chris Barnes. Yo, does anybody know Barnes? Send him a torture rack link. I'm missing the demo. But so we're listening to it right now. Well like, come on, this this is cool. Like, how do you not like this? For real. Like, if you like death metal, I feel like this is something that just... Kind of like, hell yeah, you know? But this is on Parasitic Records. I think he would like this. Because it just seems like something he would like. Because I feel like he's just listening to like the wrong bands or something. Because like... I'm sorry, but like there were bands like Infester and stuff back even in Barnes' day that like they were way better vocalists than Barnes was. 
Barnes had pronunciation though, which is very important. Same thing with Ben. That's why Glenn is such a good vocalist. His pronunciation is very on point. There's plenty of bands out there that just do the vocal patterns for their lyrics, but vocalists like Chris Barnes, they make sure to hit every single like lyric, and that's very important. Like as a vocalist, like you appreciate that shit. Cause sometimes, dude, like I'll I'll cheat a few lines. It's hard sometimes, and you you might have to. But if you lift weights, listen to some torture rack tonight. I guarantee. You know, you might either do some more reps or put some more weight on that dumbbell. It's like heavy bra. And I'm very stoked we fixed the uh, dreaded donations. Finally, we got that shit fixed. Just seeking it out on your own. Morbific pestilent hordes. Modern Finnish filth. And their full length, like I said, is getting the vinyl treatment. Keep your eye on uh, Head Split Records. Because mm -hmm. I'm sure that's going to sell out like immediately. If I was a betting man... 
Yeah, I would definitely be betting that it will sell out almost immediately, if not immediately. On site, it will sell out. You heard the nerd. But now, in all seriousness, if you really want a copy, I, I would try and get on that. Because it is going to sell out. I'm just messing around. Now, some of you might have never heard this demo. But while it rewinds, we're going to play something else. And this was my overall album of... Oh, no. My bad. This was my album of the year overall. Stress Angel, Bursting Church on Stitch and Black Hand. This is everything I personally want out of a modern metal record. So just keep that in mind. There's a reason why I gave this album of the year. And it's because it rips. How good is that cover? Like, seriously. Sick. Like, this just got a cassette press, too. I'm sure this sounds gnarly on tape. So, I, I'm pretty sure they still have copies. I suggest if you're into, uh, like, ripping evil metal and cassettes to grab one, because it's awesome. And you want this, trust me. Like, I feel my hair growing right now. So listen to Stress Angel. Their demo is even gnarly. Well, their demo is just gnarly. But this is like... In 20 years, like... I hope, like, my nephew's like... Yo, I got that Stress Angel first press, man. Like, come on. That riff right there, it's just that tremolo. Like, eh, it's amazing. Yeah, I think Flaming Kingdom goes in the Bursting Church. Or I might have this on the which side, but I might have put the wrong side. Yeah, 
Yeah, I put the B side on. I knew it. So that was Providence, and we're gonna go into Angel of Stress. They got rips. Look, I get thanked. There's my name. Yay. That's not why I gave it album of the year. I would have done that anyway. I'm a sucker for this stuff. Sounding like It's a great record, trust me. Sit down, listen to it, take it all in. This video is pretty much just a bunch of suggestions. It's me leading you to water, but not forcing you to drink it, but, you know, maybe give it a taste test. Why not? you might find something you really like. And that's what's fun about doing these. Because I know this demo is not on Bandcamp. I know it's on Instagram. I mean, I know it's on YouTube, but Caustic Wounds Grinding Terror demo, essential.
stumble across this at a reasonable price grab it for real I really wish somebody would put this out on vinyl just for the sake of preserving like to me this is a great piece of grind core and I feel like it just needs to be preserved but this is a split with Rune Magic and Chthonic Deity, Chthonic Deity, or Deity, however you want to pronounce it. But we have Paul from Bud Inhalation and Spectral Voice, Erica from Skullex, and Charlie from Ascended Dead. And right now you can catch him on tour with Immolation. And uh, Incantation, no, no, with Incantation and Nile and uh, Sangha Sugarbog, and uh, I think there's one other band, I just don't remember. No, that's another tour. I'm sorry, that's the tour. It's uh, Sangha Sugarbog, Nile, Inc Incantation. I'm sure the headliners might switch each night, but if anybody watching has a ticket let me know what who who's actually the headliner but i'm gonna play some uh chthonic deity because i haven't listened to it in a minute and i really love this split parasitic records put it out i was told it was out of print yeah dude yo that tape too that's the one like I think I even left a comment the day that video got posted. I was like, yo, please put this out on tape. Like, I, I, I would, like, because to me, that's the best thing they ever recorded. That was way better than the full length. That was way, the EP is very interesting because... I like that there's a story behind it, that it was kind of born out of, like, improvisation through, you know, certain substances, and I just think that's kind of interesting, because there's a story. Like, some bands, like, so, uh, anything interesting happen? Like, not like, hey, we you know, impro improvised this demo that ended up, like, getting us signed to a major label off two tours and, you know, selling merchandise. Like, that's not unheard of, but, like, it really helped open the door for a lot of other bands, uh, you know. 
Because I think Frozen Soul was the first from the... I'm looking at an original Maggot Stomp poster from when they stopped doing pins. When they started just doing cassettes and stuff. And according to this... So, the Grave Ascension demo, which is one of my favorite demos that they ever released. I'm positive that that's 2017. Uh, the Sin Never Dies... Because uh, it was originally 20, it has the 2015 demo, I think. And yeah, this poster says new stuff coming in 2018, meaning the posters from 2017. But uh, yeah, the Malignant Altered demo. Although mine's self released, my cassette is a DIY. I don't know if you ever saw this. I mean, if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this a million times, but... Yeah, this is not a Maggot Stomp release. This is, uh... From the... The band sent me this, like... And I appreciated the hell out of it, because... It's one of my favorite, you know, and go-to, like, demos. But... Chthonic Deity. Give them a listen. Remember, we have Paul from Spectral Voice, Charlie from Ascended Dead, Erica from Neurosic, and Skolex. So it's going to sound a little bit like Blood Incantation, obviously, so... It's still awesome. Corpse Gristle killed the reissue game also. Hails to them. And happy anniversary, Parasitic Records. This is one of my favorite releases you did. Great split. Rune Magic and Chthonic Deity. If you never heard it, now you will. Very good stuff, though. Yeah, they get two songs and uh, Chthonic Day, and then uh, Rune Magic got one. Is Paul on vocals or is Eric? Wait, Josh, are, Josh, are you still in here? Josh, if you're still in here, I need I need your help real quick. Damn it. I think that's Erica, but it might be Paul. It's one or the other on vocals. Oh, here we go. All right, so Erica and Paul share vocals. Oh, word? It says they both do vocals here, though, so that that's good. I haven't listened to this, like, in, like, a year. I don't know why. It's, like, badass, you know? That's Paul. Like that, that that was Paul, like a hundred percent. Did Paulo Giarde do this cover? Very hard to like read. Yo, it's it's out of print. Like, if you have a copy of it, like Hold on to it, man. Yeah, I know. He, yo, he's a savage on here. Like, listen to him blasting. Just...
That's what I mean. If anybody's going to see like incantation tonight, he'll be drumming for them. Go give him, uh, you know, a fist bump. Now that's Erica. I could tell that's Erica. Yeah, on, on the flyers it looked to be that way. Because technically, Niall is on a bigger record label than Incantation. I think Paolo Giarde did this cover, but I'm like not positive. If you can headbang, please do it at home, folks. Just do it for me. Ah, uh, I figured that, because they have George Colias on this set, on this tour, I think. I saw a picture Cody posted with George Colias. I was like, oh shit. I didn't know George was on this tour. But yeah, this is out of print, sadly, so don't go paying some gnarly price on Discogs for it. But like, I'm pretty sure Cathonic Deity did like a, a cassette compilation with like all this material. That might not be out of print, but I know this is like 100%. I mean, I'm a big Rune Magic fan, and like, I, I have a nice little collection going. But this is like one of my, like, has one of my favorite Rune Magic songs. The Moon is the Portal to Death, like, it's a great song. But yeah, if you never heard this before, definitely check it out. Charlie's skill level is on a complete, just, you know, different level. It's like, like, just how seeming, because he did the recording, too, and stuff. Drums and recording. I was just looking at the full length, like, I, ha I have uh, Extremely Dead over there. There's Erica right there. Hold on. Just let her do her thing. But, um, I would say if you're... Josh, how would you, like, describe... Chthonic Deity, probably like Blood Incantation meets like, I don't know, it's something I can't really put my finger on. It was one of those, because it's like one of those things like my brain tells me like, yo, like, alright, this is sick, like, you definitely like this. 
But, like, it's just, like, really killer death metal. It doesn't matter. It doesn't... You know what? It sounds like Chthonic Deity. It doesn't sound like anything else. It has its own distinct sound to it, honestly. I mean, there's definitely BI vibes and whatnot. Yeah, definitely. Oh, Hales. That's sick. I think it's awesome that, you know, this works now. Like, it, it just puts a smile on my face. Because, like, man. Makes me want to give you folks the best. And to me, that's, you know, it's hard to do, but somebody's got to do it. I want to give you folks, like, the most, you know, booth-free tunes that, like, we can possibly play and stuff. So, we're going to hit some underground stuff. Now, here's one some of you might not have ever heard, but... Originally released on NVNM Records, this is uh, Blasphematory's full length, Depths of the Obscurity, on vinyl through Nuclear Winter Records, which is Dead Congregation's record label. So if you're keeping score, that means don't ask questions, this is going to roll, because, come on, it's Dead Congregation, you know they're not going to put out some you know, mediocre slab of New Jersey death metal, and yeah, enjoy, because I love this record, like, I listen to the cassette a lot, but I love this on vinyl, it sounds like Gourmet on steroids. Like, anybody in California that, you know, I know that NVNM Fest got rescheduled with, like, Altar of Gore, but, like, yo, Blasphematory is, like, in my opinion, they're right next to Altar of Gore when it comes to, I mean, they have some of the same members, but, like, trust me, man, like, don't sleep on Blasphematory. Depths of the Obscurity is probably one of my favorite, like, East Coast death metal records in a very long time. This and Altar of Gore's full length, I think, were better than anything most bands put out in the past couple of years. Yeah, dude, it was, it's Blasphematory, Altar of Gore, I think Burial Stone, uh... I forget, it's like, it's like all the NVNM bands. But it had to get pushed back. Oh, I love it. Sick. I think this is cool too. Like here's the demo cover. And then there's the full length. people out there that are like, oh, dude, this sucks, like, that stuff boggles my mind, like, to me, this is, like, as real as it, it gets, Martyr's Tears, like, hell yeah, sick, you got Joe and Chris, New Jersey death metal. Awesome. 
Like seriously awesome. Blasphematory. Dude, I can't wait for my Alter Gore LP to get here. I love that, dude, just that blast. Sound, oh my, sounds so good. Oh, it's great. This whole album, though, it's just like banger, 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 banger. But I never hear anybody talk about it. So that's why we're going to talk about it now. Yeah, blasphematory. I know this might be hard to come by, but I know I've seen Head Split have CD copies of it and stuff, but like, I do understand the vinyl is kind of expensive, like, I get it, so. But there's definitely a couple labels, dude, for real. Can you imagine a band like this doing something like that? It, it wouldn't happen. Like I said, they're on Big Congregation's record label for a reason. It's because if you do stuff like that, you know, you're not gonna like a rec like a band like Dead Congregation. They're gonna just like look at you and just be like, you know. I mean, and I get who cares what Dead Congregation thinks, but like, you know, I if Dead Congregation heard my band, I would want them to be like, whoa, this is kind of cool. I wouldn't want them to be like, oh, this is stupid. Because to me, like, you know, that, like, I'm a geezer. Like, those guys are a little bit older than me, but, like, you know, you do want the approval of your peers at some, you know, respect level if you're in a band. You don't want to just be in a band that, you know, people only talk to you because you're in a band. Like, that, that's lame. Like, don't be that, that guy. Like, if you don't like somebody, like, tell them. Be like, dude, I think you suck. Like, most of the time, they'll be like, all right, hey, thanks. Like, now I don't have to waste my time, like, acting nice or whatever. Like, you know, like, if somebody wants to be a jerk, just be a jerk. And get it out of your system, because... Otherwise, you're just going to be a bummer to everybody else, and people are going to end up just, like, whenever your name pops up, and they're like, oh, no, not that guy. You, you'd never want to be known as that guy. If that ever happens, you need to, like, legitimately reevaluate what's going on around you. Because being that guy, like, that guy originated from a movie called PCU. And if you don't know what that guy is, and if you're like, dude, who cares? All right, you should care. Because again, I've mentioned this before. It's just like riding a bike or skateboarding. To me, style kind of matters. Like, especially if you're a musician. Like... I think your promo photo aesthetic, as lame as it sounds, it has nothing to do with your music, but I feel like it's important. Like your promo photos need to kind of represent the sound that you're going to be giving to your audience. And when I see like, you know, very bright colors and stuff, it's cool sometimes, but other times, for example, we're going to travel to Texas and look at Church of Disgust, who are now on Hell's Headbangers. Congratulations. 
A veneration of filth. Just look at that cover in black and white. Look, we have a swamp. We have everything we need in a death metal cover, but it's absolutely filthy because, you know, Putrid did the cover art. Putrid Matt doesn't play, and everything about this is amazing. Hails to Dustin, you're the, you're the man, dude. Dustin James. If you don't like Church of Disgust, you're a cop. Seriously, like. But if Church of Disgust wanted to, get somebody to color this in, make tie-dye t-shirts, profit. But why would you want that? I would just want this on a white t-shirt. Personally, I think that's, that's all I would want. That on a white t-shirt. Dude. Like, when Sunken Tomb found the extra copies, it took us three months to sell 20 copies of this. It boggled my mind though, like, cause I was like busting my ass, like, yo, uh, like, Sunken Tomb has Church of Disgust copies, and like, yeah, nobody like followed through. I think they still might have they might still have a couple of copies, honestly. Like, I would go check. Like, go to Sunken Tomb Records Bandcamp. They legit might still have. Just playing some Church of Disgust. But doing it for Texas. And the good people at Sunken Tomb Records. Death metal or die, you take up too much space. I can't wait for their new album. It's gonna be on Hell's Headbangers. Josh, do you have a copy of this? Like, I forget, did they make colored copies? I, I just have it on black, but I like swear this was on red? Or am I just like a man? I just, I think my gutless. I think that's all there was then, right? Oh, word? All right, then, yeah, I guess there was red also. Like, I, I can just stare at the poster, like, all day. There's so much detail and putrid, like, artwork. And Church of Disgust, like, their logo is just so good. It would, if they did a reissue and did this cover in color and then made like shirts like legitimately, it would sell like, you know. Yeah, I, dude, I agree, man. Like, 
I listen to it, but like every now and again where I kind of keep this like in, like it's like legit like right here. It's like, it's lit, it's actually like an arm's length away from me. <laughs> I know that's like a saying, but it actually is. Huh? What? Yeah, uh, what are you, what are you talking about? I think you got some misinformation, boss. I'm sorry, but I think you have some misinformation. Spectral voice is Eli, Jeff, Morris, Paul. And, uh, wait. Eli, Jeff, Morris, Paul. Yeah. Eli, Jeff, Morris, Paul. What incantation is Morris, Paul, Jeff, Isaac. And they will never do double duty again when it comes to touring. But unless somebody just joined, uh, yeah, Texas is really far from Denver. And, you know, I'm pretty sure Blood Incantation has like a big European tour scheduled for fall. So that would mean Malignant Altar couldn't tour. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Where, where'd you get that information? Because just, j just in case, you know, that's not true. You don't, you don't want to spread false information. Because it could cause confusion and stuff. I'm looking for something special here. It's a rare one and it caused a giant fuss this one time on Insta in Instagram. And it's one of the reasons I want to put it on because there's a little story behind it. Because I, I was, like, kind of laughing about it. Because I just thought it was so ridiculous. Like, all right, here it is. All right, so, again, this is a release on Dead Congregation's record label. But it was before they changed it to Nuclear Winter. And it was still Martyr Doom Productions. So, this is the Infestor, uh, the Infestor full length. To the depths and degradation. And this is only the fifth Martyr Doom Records release. So, I don't even remember where I got a copy of this from. I'm pretty sure it was, it was either Nuclear War Now or Hell's Headbangers or Parasitic, I think, actually, to be honest. Because the cassettes had just been reissued by Headsplit. And both cassettes. This was, this was the first time. This was not the last time. So. Not much. How you doing? So here's the demo for Darkness Unveiled. And here's To the Depths and Degregation. Now here's the LP version. Does something look strange? Because obviously, yeah, the font looks totally boof. But this is not a bootleg. But according to, uh, what is that record label? I don't even know. If, oh, all right. So produced by, uh, 
Odin Thompson at uh, Morbund Records. The guy at Morbund Records hit me up about this, and uh, he was like, oh, dude, you know that's a bootleg, right? So I'm like, dude, the, what? Like, no, like, dude, no way would they put out a bootleg of an Infestor record. Like, you're talking about dead congregations, right? Like, to me, you know, this is a, like, a very, very reputable, like, they're one of the best death metal bands in the game. Why would they put out a bootleg of this record? It doesn't, it wouldn't, it just doesn't make sense. But this guy, he, like, swore by it, and I hit up Martyrdom and was like, yo, like, this dude's saying this is a bootleg. Like, like what's going on? Because, like, it, it was, you know, it, it was, if I remember, it took me a while to, to hunt down a copy, but, but, you know, like I said, I found it relatively easily because the cassettes had just been reissued. Martyrdom reissued it on vinyl. But I always thought it was kind of suspect that the logo wasn't in Old English, but... I was told it was like a misprint and it would have like cost more to send back, which makes sense. Like that makes complete sense. Cause you know, as important of a record that this is like, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with the cassette, but like, again, I, I get it. But at the same time, it would be nice to have the actual, like logo and everything but it's definitely not a bootleg like if it, it's like a heavy duty lp and again it's dead congregations record label they're not gonna sell you boof and it has the same exact like information promo photos and everything from the head split reissues But some of the gnarliest teenagers in extreme metal history. Jason O, DJ D, and Todd S. Keep in mind, this is like 1993. This kid's mad, he got detention. Next talks about getting detention. I never went and then they'd give me a Saturday and my dad like knew all the teachers and would just get me out of it it's pretty cool but after we blast some infester we're gonna play something else and then I have some stuff I have to do I'm just thinking real quick what do I sign you folks off with? Oh shit. Like, this is so filthy. I, I love it. Oh, I know.
we're gonna put my friend Sludge Band on last, but dig into some Infester if you want. Plus Gargling, Seattle, Death Metal, Desecration from the 90s. I think the one dude like joined uh, a Dario Denna. I'm pretty sure, is that the dude that's in uh, like Dis Spirit? Or uh, he's in one of those bands. Was he in Weakling? Ah, man, I'm drawing a blank. God darn. I love the way the double kick sounds on here. Like it sounds like a wet typewriter because they told the engineer like they wanted an organic drum sound. So like that's like as organic as it gets. Like listen to the double kick. Like the double kick legit sounds like it was recorded like in a foot of like slime. It's one of the reasons it's so gross sounding. Hell yeah. Now yeah, those uh, head split and fester reissues, they were gr they're great, honestly. I got the first batch. I should have re-upped and got the second batch, but I didn't have the money and I was happy with having the first batch. But this is morose. High as fuck and ready to die. Demo 2021. This is recorded in the Kensington. This is recorded in Kensington, Philadelphia during Active Riot Activity August 2020. Kensington's the largest open air drug market in Philadelphia. Ah, oh, it's so hard not to headbang. This is ossified. Oh, it's so good.
past Q. Forever my queen. I don't know if they still have copies of this or not, but if they do, morose, high as fuck, and ready to die. But we're gonna close things off. Savage. That's gonna be awesome. Could have thrown the LP on. <laughs> song by Black Curse. Yeah. Oh, 
lá. Well, you have members of Primitive Man in this band, by the way. Uh, whoever was talking about Primitive Man. Yeah, dude, I love Black Curse, man. And we'll end today for the moment. I might have two of these. Uh, let me look around my room. I'm pretty sure I have one that's like burned. I could send you this one if I find that one. So let me look around. I, I, I know I have one that's like, it's like burnt here. I'm cool with keeping that one. Just let, let me, let me try and find it. I'll let you know if I find it. Cause I, dude, I know I have two. Like, I don't think I gave it, I might have given it away to like. Hold on, I got this too, dude. Do you have this? Do you have this? Cause 
this is cool as hell. If you expect mercy, don't read on. And there's Eli at uh, Kill Town Death Fest. Dude, what? That's a... I, Cause yeah. Check out this little Easter egg. To those who have drawn down the moon, joined in darkness in worlds without end, black curse unfolds its evil. That's cool, come on. Dude, Eli's a beast on here, man. He legit sounds like a monster. And then this drum build up, like, coming up. Holy shit. Right here. Straight up. That's some conqueror shit. I know, it's sick, I love it. That's why, I, dude, Black Curses, they're so good. <laughs> they always do the sort of, you gotta turn them towards hell. That's what that means when you, you do it like that. It's, to hell.
I kid cause I love. But no, when you listen to this record, chains just come out of it's like Hellraiser. Ah! Uncle Frank! Had to hear it from your own lips. <laughs> it actually feels good on my neck, like, honestly. That feels good. It really does, though. It feels great. It's so hard not to headbang though, still. I'm like fighting the urge so hard to just thrash. We'll do one more. Just because you folks have been sick. Like I appreciate the donations. Because what's the best nation? A donation. Waka waka waka! I'm gonna make a sign. Yeah. Hey, I need something on my head. My hair will get all over. record I apologize highly recommend checking it out on your own maximum volume yields maximum results as always like legit turn that stuff up unless you know you're in a situation where you, you can't turn your volume all the way up it's not worth getting evicted folks I'm glad. See, stuff like that's the reason I do this. And it, it's cool. That and when I hear somebody, like, let's say somebody never heard this before. And they go and get a copy. And then I get a random DM on Instagram. And it's like, yo, like, I bought that Black Curse record because of your stream. And because of that, now I'm listening to... You know, all these bands I didn't know existed a week ago, and to me, that's what it's all about, honestly. Like, just the people that do the research and, you know, go out of their way to, to find, like, because I love when some of you find stuff for me. Like, you, when you folks give me good requests, it's really cool. Like, it really is. And because of that, we're going to end things with something I don't really play too often. And it's kind of, and this, this sounds kind of lame, but <sighs> I kind of, for a while, I just didn't want other people to know about this band. Like, I kind of noticed that they weren't really getting that much attention until their last release. And then everything got reissued on cassette. But I'm talking about Norway's only war metal band, Goatcraft. Now, I'm not really allowed to say anything else about this band, but I, I know their members. They're really, really sick guys. And, uh... They really take the whole Black Witchery proclamation worship seriously, and it's on Iron Bonehead, it's super gnarly, and the Mark Riddick art, I think it's one of his best pieces in years, honestly. 
Hey, look at this. But then I do have some stuff to do. But check out this Satan. This is a sulfurous northern bestiality by Goatcraft. Oh, there are pictures on the EP, sorry. Hell yeah, thank you, Andreas. Appreciate it, it's sick. This is the Angel Slaughter EP. Again, look at that Satan. Great. I wish I still had my bullet belt. This thing needs to be draped in bullet belts. But you would think there'd be more like black death metal bands out of Norway, but to my knowledge, it's just goat craft. This shit rules, like, I, I love this album, it's great. And it's spelled with a K, by the way, the like Goat Crap. Yeah, this... This seriously rules, man. Like, they're one of those bands, like, I really feel like people sleep on this. Speak to go craft the Norway. Great. Ah. All right. So we escaped the Ross Bay cult somehow, but you did not escape the evil that is goat craft, as it will follow you, and hopefully, you enjoy it as much as I do.
because if you're looking for some high quality Norwegian black death metal, then Mr. or Mrs. Nobody, go check out GoCraft because it will be way cheaper in your country to get copies of this stuff because their new material I missed out on because the shipping alone was like very gnarly, I'll just put it. It was a little out of my price range, sadly, because it looked really sick. The cover was like a nod to like Proclamation with like the, uh, well, you know, like the black and red font, but it had like the skull and stuff. I figured that, but I was, you know what I meant, like shipping wise, it's not going to cost like your life. For something that's in the same country is what I what I mean. But I'm gonna sign you folks off with some of Finland's finest. Remember, what's the best nation? A donation. The only war medal I know of legitimately from Norway is what we just played. Like honestly. And they're gotten real fast for you. And as always, I don't remember. But uh, we're going to put Elemental on and just sign off. And get, I'm thinking it's 33, but I could be wrong. Yeah, we're good. But I do appreciate everybody hanging out and stuff. You know, it means a lot. Uh, I'm crazy. It's crazy that some of this went on for 200 minutes of just rambling and listening to some cool tunes with you folks. I enjoy it. And, you know, I hope you do go back to the beginning and watch the bone sickness part of the video where we go over what sounds better the version with the samples or the version without the samples so check that out and you know leave a comment if you want but uh yeah thanks for everybody that donated also that's super gnarly and that's a new thing like we're actually able to do donations finally so yeah it's very awesome and that's another thing it, that kind of gives me incentive to give you folks the best possible stuff i can so i hope i can do that but thanks for hanging out and shit you know i hope nobody got like fired from work or like got kicked out of school but thanks for hanging out, you fucking rule.